from the studios of the Performance Motorsports Network, bringing you the fastest 60 minutes in racing. It's Burning Rubber Radio. Burning Rubber, baby. 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 Now, here are your hosts. I know what the prediction is. You don't even have to explain it. And here it is. Burning Rubber, baby. Yeah, Burning Rubber, baby. All is well in the world. Junior has won the Daytona 500. I'm Andy DeLay. Welcome to another week of Burning Rubber Radio. I'm sitting here with Charles Robinson. How are you doing, my fat buddy? I am so fine. It's just, you just couldn't see it under a microscope, man. Let me tell you. We finally got to pop the cherry on the racing season. Yeah. Now it's time to, to get back in gear and watch the Snooze Cup and the awesome trucks and the social nationwide. Yeah, exactly, man. It looks like you've been using some conditioner with those long blonde locks there, Mr. Charles. That's pretty nice takes a lot of work to maintain this dude. You ought to know that. Yeah, I know. Hey, also, not so much with us and just got uh, bonded out of jail. We have Dan Smith. And Dan, man, I can't believe it. You're not here for work because you're in jail, but at least you're on the phone with us this evening. How are you doing, buddy? I'm doing all right, man, but just remember, you're going to have to pay for this quick call from the jail. It did say, uh, you know, that I was in a security facility. <laughs> we got so- friends to collect. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Behind the box back there making things happen, we have the one and only Bob Steele. How you doing tonight, Bob? Hey, look, man, when he called in for that collect call, um, I told him it was going to be on your dime, so uh, don't even try and stick me with this bill. That, that, that credit card number I gave you was Charles, so don't worry oh, okay. about that. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, well, Charles is my new best friend then. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Good luck on that one, big boy. <laughs> well, folks. Welcome to Berman Rubber Radio, and uh, of course, like we said, Junior won the Daytona 500, but more importantly, Kyle Busch won the Camping World Truck Series race on Friday night, and it was a great race, and tonight on the show, we have the points winner of the race. Uh, Of course, we have Timothy Peters, who was beaten by like .017 the hundredths or something like that, by a bumper, basically, by Kyle to the line to win the race. Uh, we have Timothy Peters with us. And, Charles, you got to announce who we got from Discovery Channel's Moonshiners, buddy. Hey, buddy, we got one of the Kentucky homeboys, one of the newest and most favorite characters, I guess, coming along now. We got Chico, baby. Chico from Discovery Channel. Folks, hang out. We're going to have a good time. Jump on in there and tighten the belts because we're about to go burning rubber, baby. We'll be right back with the iRacing segment after this. Now it's time to shift gears. Here's Leonard from Cotman. All shook up. More after this. Car problems? You can trust your local Cotman man. Cotman has a 40-year history as a leader in car repair and making happy, satisfied customers. Whatever's wrong with your car, SUV, or truck, Cotman will check it out free using state-of-the-art diagnostic equipment. Don't take chances with your car. Bring it to Cotman and let your local Cotman man show you why they are America's transmission and total auto care experts. Visit Cotman.com to download money-saving coupons. Cotman. Real service, real fast. Do you ever notice when you're driving on the highway after a high rate of speed, you just barely touch the brakes and the whole front of the car starts to shake? Doesn't necessarily mean that your front end is out of alignment. Cotman Transmission's Total Car Care also can inspect your brakes, your front end, and your wheel bearings. Cotman Transmission's in Manassas, Virginia offers a free 21-point check. It consists of road testing your vehicle, a thorough visual inspection, and an electronic scan of the computer system. This goes a long way. Come see us. See Leonard and the fine folks at Cotman of Manassas, 9113 Mathis Avenue in Manassas. Give them a call at 703-365-7200. Did you know that birthday parties help build confidence in kids? Yeah. Did you know that giving kids less sugar before bedtime helps them sleep better? Oh, totally. Did you know that friendly kids have more friends? Everybody knows that. Hey, guys, did you know that most people think they're using the right car seat for their kid, but they're not? I didn't know that. Parents who really know it all know for sure that their child is in the right car seat at the right age and size. Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat to make sure your child is protected. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Hi, I'm Mickey for Bed Bug Detection Services. Bed Bug Detection Services rescues dogs from the Humane Society and the SPCA, then trains them at the Florida Canine Academy. We then pair them up with a handler where they will spend the rest of their lives in a happy family home working in the community. We want to rescue our second dog, but we cannot do it without your help. 
We are fundraising to bring home our next canine. Please go to bbds.us, that's bbds.us, and do your part in helping us rescue another dog. bbds.us will give life, home, and a meaning to another dog. bbds.us. With every donation, you will receive a signed postcard from our current bed bug detection dog rescue, Lily. Go to bbds.us. And thank you. Green, green, green! What's with all the green? Nothing but green. What's wrong with pastels and power colors? Ah, this is just wrong. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Now back to the most diverse racing show. Did I scratch that? The most politically incorrect racing radio show on the internet today. Yeah, yeah, blah, 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 blah. Burning Rubber Radio. Yeah, that's right. Welcome back to Burning Rubber Radio. We're not only on the internet. We want to welcome everybody again from Manchester, Kentucky on WWXL AM 1450. You're burning rubber with us right here. And, uh, man, talking about burning rubber, I know Dan was there. Charles wasn't there, but... Can I say it? Winner, winner, chicken dinner, winner, winner, chicken dinner. I whipped everybody's rear end uh, this past weekend on the iRacing.com Burning Rubber Radio Truck Series race at Martinsville. Dan, what'd you think about seeing me win that one, buddy? Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you what. You, uh, you've you got this media, NASCAR media thing down the way you uh, stretch the truth there. Uh, uh, you pulled <laughs> one out of your butt, man. You was eating crap all night long and, and uh, benefited from a little wreck at the end. But, yeah, congratulations on the win. It was pretty cool. But uh, uh, we'll see what happens this week in that Burning Rubber Radio Eye Racing Truck League. But, hey, guess what? What, baby, what? I parked it in the Class C Fixed League uh, Series and I racing at Daytona uh, yesterday, and that was my first win in 2014. I've only got about 12 races in, but I'm coming for Charles in those legend cars. I've been practicing for the... Uh, for Lanier this week, buddy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Charles, what you been doing on iRacing.com, buddy? Well, let's just put it to you this way. I've been going out there and trying to run everything that I can run, getting as much practice as I can, but I really have been concentrating on the legends. Again, like I said earlier in a couple of shows before, if you want to learn how to set the cars up, get out there in a legends car or a, you know, a street stock and just, just kind of play around with it. I got out there and actually had a guy that had given me a win setup I went in and tweaked what he had, and I actually got my first win with the Legends passing on the outside, which is unheard of when you're running at Lanier. And yeah. I, did, I beat him by about four seconds once I finally got around him. And then all of a sudden, I think that guy shared his setup with everybody else, so it started getting more competitive. But now I still am. The last time I checked on Friday, I was seventh in overall points in the Advanced Legends, and I was about 80 points out of first. And, of course, I ain't had a chance to... Uh, run anymore but i'm going to i'm going to see what happens i, I got a question for charles because you know when when you got first got me on i race and uh andy i was really into the legend cars and i still am and i agree with everything charles has said over the last few weeks about set up on those cars and and shot collar and things but charles what what if you don't mind without giving your setup away you want to you want to share what the cross weight is that you're running I couldn't even tell you the crossway because I don't even look at it. All I know is I, what I do is I watch the corners and I watch the amount of spring is on each side of the car. Now, you know what the uh -huh. legends, of course, basically all you've got to adjust is the springs. You've got a little bit of tow. You've got some stagger, maybe some air pressures. And what I figured right. out about these cars is a lot of people going there and the first thing they start doing is messing with the stagger. Well, no, you've got to make these cars roll through the corners kind of put a little bit more weight on the right rear so it starts breaking loose but you also got to yep. make that left front soft enough to kind of transition over so i basically you tune the cars to where you run them wide open in the power band since they do technically run a, a yamaha street bike motor you get enough right. weight where to roll and then you start floating through the corners and basically you got them pegged to the the max you lift the throttle they roll back over on that right rear and they start doing their slide and i mean you can you can really do some damage with those little cars by doing that oh yeah you can you, you definitely can and you're right you know getting like you, those cars require a lot of weight on the right rear i agree with you man and, and i know we're burning this right by racing segment up with legend cars but they are a fun class to run and they're fun to work with and uh i, I sometime i'd like i'd like for you to share your cross weight with me i'd just like to know where you're at there compared to what i'm what i've been running but uh at any rate, man, what's up? What what you been up to on iRacing besides uh, avoiding the wrecks and 
picking up the wins, Andy. Me, uh, I've been, of course, practicing and getting things together in the Burning Rubber Radio League. And real quick before we're done with this here, folks, if you want to sit here and try what this burn, this iRacing is, it's iRacing.com. And us here at Burning Rubber Radio, we're so nice. If you go on our Facebook page at Burning Rubber Radio, ask us. We'll give you three free months of iRacing. All you need is a steering wheel and a decent computer. And you can go out there and race with all of us you know, right here in the Burning Rubber Radio League. So... Oh, man, we're looking at uh, all kinds of good stuff with the iRacing this week. We're going to be running Charlotte and the iRacing League. And anyway, folks, what we got to do here is uh, we're going to go take a break here. And, Charles, are you are you sure we're good with all that shine and stuff that we're going to be put packing into this place? Oh, yeah, I promise you we're good at that. <laughs> <laughs> and I know Dirty Dan, he has his own recipe. And, and Dan, y'all, you can make some of that hooch in the jailhouse, too, man. I'm sure they'll be happy about that. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I've already been put in seg, and they took my hooch away from me, so i got to start all over again. <laughs> That's all right. Breakfast in the morning, you can take the oranges off the tray. Anyway, folks, we'll be back with a little more Burning Rubber Radio and Chico from Moonshiners right after this. If you're a gearhead, you probably go online to those hot rod superstores, drooling over the chrome and speed goodies until you find just the right item for your muscle car, tuner car, or truck. But what do you do when it comes to fixing the mom mobile? If you're like most do-it-yourselfers, you head to the strip all parts store and talk to the do you want fries with that kid behind the counter. Hold on, Bunky. Did you stop to think where those chain stores are getting the parts that you're installing in the vehicle that's used to transport your family everywhere? They get the cheapest suppliers they can find to sell you the parts at bargain prices. Their limited lifetime warranties? What a joke. Remember the last time mom's car broke down? You heard about that one for weeks. Don't take that chance again. Excelsior Racing has the quality parts you need for your family vehicle. Parts that you can install knowing you're getting the best for your family. Excelsior Racing. Quality parts. Personalized service. Affordable pricing. Fast to you direct. Excelsior Racing. Online at ExcelsiorRacing.com or call 502-909-2034. Ginger Williams Chevrolet Buick GMC is your Lexington, Kentucky, and Corbin Chevy Buick and GMC authority. From pre-owned to the newest models, Ginger Williams is the only place to shop in the Lexington area. Check out their website for your next new or pre-owned vehicle, www.tincherwilliamschevrolet.com. All of the full-line inventory of in-stock and on-order Buicks, GMC trucks, and Chevrolets are right there online. Plus, you can check out what's hot at Tincher Williams on the homepage. Schedule your service appointment. Browse the inventory. Look for Tincher Williams specials. Check out your financing options. See what GM incentives are being offered for your vehicle. You can even shop for new tires at their convenient online tire store and get directions from wherever you are right there. It's all online at www.tincherwilliamschevrolet.com. One, two, three, That's Tincher Williams Chevrolet Buick audio GMC, level, audio located level, in London, one, two, Kentucky. Three. Your Lexington and Corbin Chevy Buick and GMC Authority. Guns, gas, and girls. It's burning rubber, baby. Now back to the show. Woo! Bob, is everything okay over there, buddy? You know something? I think Comcast has struck again. <laughs> You're over there pulling your hair out. Won't I you? swear to God, I think Comcast has struck again. But you know something? We got a great interview coming up here, and let's just jump right into it. How about yeah. that? Yeah. That that's right, folks. We have Chico from Moonshiners. How you doing, Chico? We're getting right here from Timothy Peters. But yeah, we actually, yeah, we are. How's it going, brother? Good. Hey, this is Andy, Burning Rubber Radio, buddy. Um, Charles is sitting right here next to me. I heard you say something about is Timothy Peters going to be on the show? Yeah, he's up right after you, brother. Charles, where'd you where'd you meet Chico at? Well, I'll tell you what, I got to meet Chico in a town called Gravel Switch. Now, a lot of you folks may not know where Gravel Switch is at. But it's just outside of Lebanon, and of course, that's where the distillery where Chico got his start. But now, Chico, buddy, a lot of our listeners out here, of course, I told you, they're NASCAR fans and stuff, but they're huge fans of the show. I'm a huge fan of yours, and I think that you're probably the best addition that they put on the show since it's been out. i got to ask you this, buddy. A lot of people don't know kind of where you got your start at in this, and won't you you just kind of give them a little background? Well, man, I, you know, I was working at a welding company here in Lebanon, Kentucky, and I got laid off, and I'm a convicted felon. You know how it is. You know, I beat up every temp service stuff I could find, and I couldn't get a job, man. I was driving a GFS food truck delivering sugar out to Limestone Branch Distillery, and Tim just kind of took a liking to me, man. You know, he thought he was somebody that he could trust, and 
I held true to that for the most part of the season. But no, man, I'm just like every other redneck in the country trying to find a job, and I just kind of fell into that through a bunch of, you know, temp services stuff, delivering sugar out there, and it was just everything played out and fell together, and Tim seen something in me that he liked, and it went from there. Falling into this, man, could you have ever expected that the popularity would hit like it has? Oh, man, uh, everybody's treated me pretty good, but as far as the popularity stuff that comes to the show, not, no one is prepared for that, man. I mean, anybody that growed up like I did, knowing 15, 20 people your entire life, and now everybody in America wants to know you, wants to meet you, wants to shake your hands. It, it's overwhelming at times. Yeah, my bad. <laughs> it is. But now, of course, Chico, now, you and I were talking a little bit, too, and we sitting up at Gribbins Grocery. I'll go ahead and plug her. That way you can tell her I'm talking about her on the radio. You've got kind of a good history, actually, in the horse background, because actually the guy that was with me up there talking to you, you know, you all know some of the same people and stuff. And how long have you even done that? Oh, man, I cut my teeth on a saddle horn, you know what I mean? When I was up big enough to, you know, know what a horse was, I've been fooling with them. Uh, Dad used to race thoroughbreds around at all the uh, county fairs and stuff here in Kentucky. Uh, we've actually had horses at Kingland when I was 15, 16. I exercised thoroughbred. But we've always trail roads, you know, Tennessee walking horses and started breads. We'd catch Start bed sales and stuff where horses was coming off the track and we doctor bad legs and stuff and try to make a run with trail riding them and we fell into the standard bread association uh showing speed horses you know the kentucky racking horse association uh the standard bread horse association here in kentucky i've been doing that since i was 14 or 15 i'm actually a, a four-time uh, state champion speed racking horse was 4-H before I turned 17. Oh, wow. Wow. As far as horses go, man, that's my pride. That's my passion. And I race them just like y'all do them old cars. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, some of us race, Chico. You know, Andy, he just kind of just hangs out and eats people's lunches. Yeah, whatever. Hey, man, man they spectators of what I do, too. Believe that. <laughs> I'd say so. Now, talking, of course, you know, a little bit about the spectating and things like that now. Of course, you know, watching the show, everybody knows you're running Tim's recipe. And, of course, you know, Tickle's kind of helping you a little bit with the distribution of that. Now, are you able to make, you know, kind of a lot? I know because you got some heat up there on you. Oh, man. I can't go to the bathroom without the law around here having to know what I'm doing. You know, they're so far up my butt, man. I can't breathe half the time. But I've got to be extra careful. But the way that works, too, I know that their attention is pointed towards me. I know the law's looking at me, and all that does is make me better at what I'm trying to do. I know they're trying to bust my head, so I've got to fly as low as I can. And as far as I'm concerned, uh, Kentucky State Police, Lebanon Police Department, ain't none of them got a radar can read me. (laughs) 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 I've been in the penitentiary, you know. I've been through that. I've been caught. And there's one thing that you come out of the penitentiary with the mentality of, and there ain't but two ways not to go back, and that's either not do nothing illegal or not get caught. My intentions coming out was, hey, I'm not going to do anything illegal. But when somebody gives me, you know, pretty well an opportunity to make enough money to pull my life out of the ashes, I've been living in for so long. Hey, man, uh, it's fair game. You know, that's what makes the world go around is money. So the only thing i got to worry about now is not getting caught. Don't get caught, Chico, because I tell you what, this is Andy here. I definitely want to try some of that Tim Smith hooch that you not hooch. That's that can't call that hooch. Oh man, we 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 figure something out. You know how it is. I got to get it to you through somebody else, but no man, we make it happen. I'm in Eastern Kentucky a lot more than people think I am. <laughs> well, Chico, you know, the whole thing is, you know, we're a racing radio show and NASCARs are a thing. And NASCAR no. got its start by bootlegging. And, right, uh, yeah. I mean, Junior Johnson paved the blacktop for y'all to race on, you know what I mean? That's right, yeah. And so I got to ask you, man, if you follow NASCAR at all, who's your driver? Man, in all honesty, when Bill Earnhardt died, man, that just ripped a piece out of me. And NASCAR just has not been the same for me since. But in retribute to everybody, I support Junior. You know, I mean, as far as that goes, I support Junior. That's what I was going to say too, Chico, because now, you know, his boy got out there and he won it. Of course, you know, everybody had to dodge Danica around the track. Yeah. 
She was going like a pinball, wasn't she? I, I, that's, that's the way I'd race, man. I mean, that's the way I've done my whole life. If I can't get to the front, I'll just take somebody out. That's the reason they ain't got me on the track nowhere. When I get behind the wheel of a vehicle, I lose my freaking mind, especially if it's got enough horsepower to impress me. <laughs> oh, there's no doubt. Of course, you was telling me a little <laughs> bit about that Bronco, too. Oh, my old Bronco's right, man. People don't know what's under the hood of this thing. Uh, when I bought it, it was, you know, 120,000-mile truck, but it's a 351 police interceptor, 95. You know, back when it was still multi-part fuel injection instead of this EFI crap they got now. Uh, <laughs> I dropped the MSD ignition system on it, a 100-horse chip and a computer, I can rip the knobs off these 32 11 50 just any time I want to. So if I get in a tight spot running from the law or running from the old lady or running from somebody's <laughs> daddy, I can, I can get out if I have to. <laughs> oh. Chico, I got a question for you, man. It's Dirty Dan. Uh, I want to no I want to talk about this moonshine a little bit, brother. And uh, um, you guys use a corn base, or, do you, or, or have you ever messed around with a sweet feed base? Man, I have done everything from fruit brandy to tree bark. You know, it's just one of them things. You make your first run, and either it gets in your blood, and it gets to the point where you want to do this and want to do that, and it either consumes you, or you're just like, hey, I'm done with it. So after I started playing around with a little bit of corn, man, I've made some sweet feed mix that was pretty good. You know, it run off 140 proof, and was real smooth to drink, and the molasses in the sweet feed, man, I like the taste of it, you know, but it's just one of them things. It ain't what I like, it's what everybody else likes, and the liquor that I've been selling to Tim's, man, just because of the name on it, people love it, and it's just, you know, corn, barley, and rye. It's not a big deal, it's not a big recipe, but the process is what makes what I do better than everybody else. When Tim set me down and beat that in my head, you know, that's what sets him above par, you know. So that's what I can't talk about. As far as the recipe, you can do whatever you want to, but the process what makes you liquor good, folks. It's keeping it simple. You keep it simple, you end up with best stuff. Everybody out there uh, talks about this apple pie and things like that. I'm kind of like you are. I, I like I like the, uh, you know. And 90% of the time if somebody comes up and says, hey, man, you know, I got this apple pie moonshine, it's ever clear. I don't care what they say. It's ever clear. <laughs> Not nobody can make oh, record, man. That that that, that your... is absolutely the truth. Absolutely the truth. I love it, Chico. I love it. You got Go your contracts it. lined out for next year, and I know you got all that stuff squared away, buddy. Are we going to see the big explosion down there with you and Tickle Man just taking over? The way we got it figured, man, is we ain't got set nothing. You know, when we start filming, that's a long time away from right now. Anything can fall out for us. But, you know, as far as I'm concerned, Tickle's got a place here in Kentucky with me as long as he wants one. And as far as me and Tyler Woods concerned, we're going to take over Kentucky. I mean, that's just part of it. I mean, they're going to have to make a new show about us called the Moonshine Mafia. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, brother, there's one thing about it. you got some other Kentucky boys here that will be looking forward to that. They ain't no doubt. Hey, man, I was born and raised in Gravel Switch. I've been in Kentucky my whole life. I ain't much more than left just to come back. <laughs> I, I, cut my, I cut my teeth on limestone rock and bluegrass, boys. There you go. That's right. That's the same with me. Now, not, I keep talking to these other city boys on here, but I know where you're coming from. They got a place, too, man. You'd be surprised how many times I drop a load of liquor off inside the city limit somewhere. <laughs> they, got a, they got a place on my books, too, brother. Believe that. They, yeah. These people in the big cities that would prefer that over top of anything else, too. Moonshine's worldwide. It ain't just the country boys drinking it. Exactly right. Well, Chico, buddy, it's been a pleasure having you on this show. And I tell you what, buddy, we'd love to have you on some other time, man, and get you on here. But now we're going to have to step out and pay us a few bills. But now there's one thing you got to do before you get off the phone. Every driver out there, everybody we have on this show, they've got three famous words that they yell out. Now, when you yell it, make sure that Vicky back there looks at you and thinks something's going on. But All now right. you got you got to yell burning rubber, baby, at the top of your lungs. This is Chico from Moonshine Boys, and we burning rubber. Woo, there it is, folks, Chico. And I tell you what, folks, we're going to step out and pay a few more bills. But I tell you what, we'll be back with some more Burning Rubber Radio. On the air, you may know me as the man about motorsports. Actually, I've been the man about insurance for over 30 years. With one call, I can cover your life, health, auto, home, and business insurance. Recently, I saved a young couple over $500 on their annual car insurance bill. No gimmicks and no green lizard. So if you think your insurer is really your good neighbor who is on your side because he is holding your money in his good hands, think again. 
Call me, 703-631-8000. I have dozens of insurance companies waiting to give you the protection you need and deserve. It may take more than 15 minutes, but you'll receive sound advice, quality professional service, and an honest opinion. That number again, 703-631-8000. As for Larry O. Automotive enthusiasts, have you modified your ride and want to see how much horsepower it'll put down? Look for bragging rights amongst your buddies, whether you're running big boost or a big block. RP Performance has your answer. Featuring a state-of-the-art two-wheel drive Dyno Dynamics chassis Dyno, RP Performance can measure your current power or help tune your car for maximum power. And for you power junkies, want to drive a fully prepared race car flat out around one of the East Coast's finest road courses? RP Performance also offers race car rentals for all your track day events. Host your next corporate team building event with the need for speed. Gift certificates are available for dyno services and track car rental. RP Performance is located at Summit Point Raceway just minutes from Winchester. Visit them online at rpperformanceracing.com or call 304-728-6749 for more information. RP Performance, your Mazda Street performance and racing specialist. Did you know that birthday parties help build confidence in kids? Yeah. Did you know that giving kids less sugar before bedtime helps them sleep better? Oh, totally. Did you know that friendly kids have more friends? Everybody knows that. Hey, guys, did you know that most people think they're using the right car seat for their kid, but they're not? I didn't know that. Parents who really know it all know for sure that their child is in the right car seat at the right age and size. Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat to make sure your child is protected. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. You're listening to Burning Rubber Radio. And now back to the iRacing God. Well, at least in his own mind. Andy DeLay and his cast of crazy. (laughs) Welcome back to Burning Rubber, baby. And I am with some crazies here with... Charles Robinson, Dirty Dan, and of course, Bob Steele. And Bob, you've got Tim Peters all revved up on the phone over there. Brother, let's hear what you got. With us tonight is Timothy Peters, the number 17 Red Horse Racing Toyota Tundra driver and uh, had a, a squeaker, a real squeaker this past weekend at Daytona. How's it going, Timothy? And welcome to uh, Burning Rubber Radio. Uh, it's wonderful. It's going well. Thanks for having me on. All right. Tell us a little bit about the race. I mean, the margin of, of victory that uh, Kyle beat you by was seven thousandths or hundred thousandths or something. It was it was completely ridiculous. Uh, you you just just missed that one, huh? Yeah, it was so close. Uh, but you know, still proud of the guys um, at Red Horse Racing that really worked hard on this new great looking twenty fourteen Toyota Tundra, Valvoline on the side of it with Express Oil Change Service Centers. Um, you know, we were a threat all night long. We were. We had one of the fastest trucks that I felt like, uh, one of the only trucks that could make that outside line work when we needed it to. So, uh, also close, 17, uh, one thousandths of a second, I believe is what he beat me by. Yeah. And it's all about timing. Sometimes the leader is a sitting duck and I tried to make that tundra as wide as I could, but, uh, nonetheless, we, uh, came home second, but we left the point leader. So it doesn't sting too bad knowing that we coming out of there going, into my backyard the end of March as the point was. Absolutely. And, of course, Kyle's a great driver, been around uh, the series for a long, long time. And uh, So uh, let's go back a little bit and tell, tell us about uh, how this ride came about for you, Tim. Well, I was kind of doing my own thing here in uh, 2009 and uh, struggling to get to each race. And it looked like the, there was no light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, during that year, I met Tom Deloach, who owns Red Horse Racing, at Daytona. And uh, things just worked out where uh, in uh, the first weekend of June at Michigan in 2009 was my first uh, official race for Red Horse Racing. And um, Mr. Tom took a chance on me and gave me an opportunity. And, uh, man, it sure has been a great ride. I've been able to build my stats in my career at Red Horse Racing. And uh, we keep continuing to build momentum and, and give these championships each and every year a run for the money. Yeah, you've done great in the truck and, and great for Red Horse Racing. Let's go back to that last couple of laps at Daytona. Tell us what you were thinking about, how the race progressed, and then at that last uh, that last part of it where uh, where Kyle just snuck by you. Well, uh, you know, it's all about timing. And uh, we knew we had a great truck when we took the lead before on the outside line, but you need other good trucks to go with you. Well, you had uh, the 32 and the 30, uh, which were are great trucks, trying to build that line, but they just couldn't quite get 
to where I was at. I think we were running sixth or seventh. Everybody in single file line. And, you know, it's all about timing. It's all about when to pull out and putting you there at the right time. Well, six or five to go, uh, I saw the, they had a good steam. Uh, I pulled out there, and, and the 32 really helped me get to the front. And, uh, you know, once we got to the front, I was trying uh, all kinds of maneuvers to manipulate the air because they were still running side by side. And, uh, unfortunately, when we got the white flag, we got beat coming back for the checker. It's, uh, you know, what else can you say? It's It stings a little bit, but uh, it, it's easy to sit back and be a Monday morning quarterback. I wouldn't have changed anything different. It's just uh, it's all about timing. And, um, you know, hey, we got momentum as the points leader going into Martinsville. No question. But I want to tell you, you mentioned Aero. And we all know that a truck is like a brick on wheels. But Aero, of the, in the last, I would say, probably five or six years maybe, has become more and more important. Tell us about the Aero of your truck and how it's affected, how, how you're doing side drafting, how you're doing the, how are you getting by these other trucks because they're so equal. Well, this year, every manufacturer changed the look of the truck. TRD and Toyota has brought out an awesome-looking OEM look to the production Tundra. Well, it's narrower. It's not as long. But Daytona is still Daytona. You still have characteristics. One of the things is, is that the closure rate with a truck is so fast. Once you get to the competitor in front of you, there's there's a little bubble that seems like everybody has a hard time breaking through to touch their back bumper. Well, with the new nose, it was it was even the cr- closer closing rate was faster but that bubble was even bigger but that was a good thing about our toyota tundra we could break that bowl and the side draft was so important it's always been important in past history there but with the new truck it seemed like the way the 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 air was coming off the front end of these trucks that side drafting was so important so um luckily we had a truck that could break the bubble that could lead lines really well it could tow other trucks really well and the good part about it was is that we could break that bubble, but our competitors couldn't break that bubble on us. So it worked out it worked out good for uh, a couple of laps there. But, um, again, we came up just a little bit short. And But it's fun playing the arrow game. You know, you can kind of stall out your competitor. You can use it to your advantage, and it's cool to have one of those tools in your playbook. I can imagine. Now, Dale Sr. once said, uh, talking about arrow, and this goes back a number of years, he said, I can see the air on the other car. I can see the air on my car. I know how to use it. And it's one of the things that made him such an incredible driver, aside from his attitude, of course, and the way he drove. Can you feel, you know, you were talking about that little bubble, the big bubble, the difference in uh, in the, the trucks and the aero and how they develop that. Can you actually physically see that bubble behind the other truck? Can you feel it? How can you tell when you're right where you need to be? Uh, you know, you you can't physically see it, but you can you can feel it. It changes inside the truck. Um, so how you position yourself changes a lot of that. A lot of that goes back to the hard work and preparation at the shop that the team does in order for you to have a great truck in the draft, where it can break that bubble, where it can side draft really well. It's all about positioning. When you position yourself at the right spot, you can feel change of cab pressure more or less it's it's how the effect of how the, the air comes in and out of the cab so you can't physically see it but you can physically feel it gotcha and that's that's probably something you know it's always a good driver always drives by the seat of their pants in addition to using their head but now with this with the the arrow being so important it's it's important to be sensitive to the pressure changes in the cab and the way the other trucks are handling in that bubble that's uh, that's a lot of lot more work for you guys, huh? Yes, but you know you kind of go back again. It's a tool that you can use to to your advantage and your competitor's disadvantage. So it's very neat. Uh, everyone at Toyota and TRD have simulations of how certain scenarios change when you approach a truck. So um, you just try to put that in your memory bank and and keep it uh, keep it for good use when it comes down to crunch time. Absolutely. Tim, now, um, we were talking about your crew a little bit. 
why don't you give us kind of a rundown? Your crew chief is? Well, you know, I paired back up with Marcus Richmond, my crew chief. Um, I was my crew chief back in late model days. I actually graduated high school with Marcus, and, uh, you know, it's all about chemistry. The core guys on the pit crew there um, year to year have stayed the same with the exception of, of, of two changes, uh, guys getting opportunities to go to cup teams. But, uh, you know, that's what that's what your success comes from is no turnover in your crew, uh, longevity in your people, uh, camaraderie, chemistry, and, and we have that, and that's very important. And they do a great job. They did a great job on pit road when we came in uh, for the pits. I believe it was three times, four times, and um, <clears throat> always gained spots each time. So uh, it's a uh, pat on the back and uh, appreciate all that they do for us. Well, it's more than just them changing the tires and changing the chassis settings and putting uh, putting fuel in the truck. I mean, it's got to be about the chemistry. It's got to be, they've got to want to work for your crew chief. The crew chief and the entire crew has got to want to work for you. So it's it's very much a symbiotic relationship. So you guys are all, do, do you get kind of d- together and do, you know, just go out and have a few beers after the race? Or, or how, how do you keep and how, how does your team keep that uh teamwork going with the crew that's so important oh you know we hang out and uh race weekend uh you know we always have to go in a couple of days before the race and so more so than ever go out uh out to eat hang out and you know cut up carry on and tell lies if you will and and that's that's just what builds a a great team is uh, the the chemistry and and the camaraderie and we we've had that for years and uh we always try to you know when we're not at the shop or not at the racetrack uh, you know, a lot of our family lives are, are different now, and, um, you know, a lot of us starting our families with little ones. I have a little one, so we don't quite get together as much as we used to um, outside of the shop or the racetrack. But while while we are uh, are at our home, away from home, we, we try to gather and, and just cut up and carry on. Well, there's, is there one team clown, there's one practical joker, one guy that, uh, that kind of um, sets the whole tone for everything in the... Uh in the garage, uh, you know, everybody has has uh, has people that that they consider favorites, and uh, you know, I just can't think of one person. There's a, <laughs> there's a tremendous great group of guys on not only the seventeen but the seven and seventy seven, and and everybody just clicks, and that's important. And um, you know, <clears throat> there's always uh, a few folks that uh, can make light of the situation and put a smile on your face, and that goes a long way. Now you mentioned the the other teams that are under the Red Horse Racing umbrella. How much information is shared back and forth between the teams as far as setup, engine prep, and that sort of thing? Oh, it's open notebook. Uh, the way we we treat Red Horse Racing is that it's one team, multiple entries. So uh, that's the great thing about having teammates is that uh, if you get to a certain racetrack and your teammates hit on something and we kind of missing it, we can go look at their notebook and see if it'll help us plug it into our chassis and uh, go from there. Well, we're talking with the uh, points leader now in the 2014 season Camping World Truck uh, Series, Timothy Peters, the number 17 Red Horse Racing Toyota Tundra. Uh, Tim, who do we need to thank for uh, sponsoring the truck? We had Valvoline on this past weekend, and they're on for three races this year. And uh, can't thank them enough. And Express Oil Change Service Center is coming on board. They're, they're part of the, the Valvoline family. And uh, Liquid Performance... Russo's Tenning, Goodridge, just uh, TRD, can't leave them out. Everyone at Toyota have, has done a great job with this race team. Uh, all the employees at Red Horse Racing, Joe Gibbs Engine. It's, uh, it's a great team effort. Uh, I'm very thankful to be a part of it. Um, and the other trucks, too, having Otterbox on Herman's truck, uh, Bullet Liners on uh, Brian Eichler's truck. So we've got great teammates, just got a great core group of guys, and uh, thankful that I get to leave my, live my dream job with these, these guys every day. Man, that is, that is living the dream, isn't it? Tim, thanks so very much for uh, talking with us in Burning Rubber Radio. Now, there's one thing that we all do with all of our guests, and, and uh, uh, I don't know if you can, if you're in, still in the airport, but we'd love to have you do it, and that is yell, Burning Rubber Baby, at the top of your lungs. Kenny Wallace started it. Can you do it for us? 
Sure, it's burning in rubber, baby. There you go. Timothy Peters, the driver of the number 17 Red Horse Racing Toyota Tundra. He is the points winner this Camping World Truck Series uh, season so far. And, uh, Tim, thanks so much for your time, and uh, we'll be talking with you and following your, your effort this year. You have a good one, and good luck on the next race, buddy. All right, thank you. I'm Bob Steele, and we'll be back with more Burning Rubber Radio right after this. Before a disaster turns your family's world upside down, it's up to you to be ready. Get a kit. Make a plan. Be informed. Learn how at www.ready.gov. Brought to you by the Federal Emergency Management Agency and the Ad Council. Hi, this is Yen Scott from Summit Point Kart in Summit Point, West Virginia. If you're looking for a real racing experience on a real racetrack, come out to Summit Point Kart this weekend. For as little as $25, you can get your racing career started. New this year, Summit Point Kart offers the RX250 capable of over 75 miles an hour. We're open every Friday from 5 p.m. till 9 p.m., Saturday from noon till 10 p.m., and Sunday from noon till 9 p.m. For more information, go to our website, Summit point cart with a k.com or you can call us at 304-725-5270 summit point cart your east coast carding center ginger williams chevrolet buick gmc is your lexington kentucky and corbin chevy buick and gmc authority from pre-owned to the newest models ginger williams is the only place to shop in the lexington area Check out their website for your next new or pre-owned vehicle, www.tincherwilliamschevrolet.com. All of the full-line inventory of in-stock and on-order Buicks, GMC trucks, and Chevrolets are right there online. Plus, you can check out what's hot at Tincher Williams on the homepage. Schedule your service appointment. Browse the inventory. Look for Tincher Williams specials. Check out your financing options. See what GM incentives are being offered for your vehicle. You can even shop for new tires at their convenient online tire store and get directions from wherever you are right there. It's all online at www.tincherwilliamschevrolet.com. That's Tincher Williams Chevrolet Buick GMC, located in London, Kentucky. Your Lexington and Corbin Chevrolet. Heavy Buick and GMC Authority. Now it's time to shift gears. Here's Leonard from Cotman. All shook up. More after this. Car problems? You can trust your local Cotman man. Cotman has a 40 year history as a leader in car repair and making happy, satisfied customers. Whatever's wrong with your car, SUV, or truck, Cotman will check it out free using state of the art diagnostic equipment. Don't take chances with your car. Bring it to Cotman and let your local Cotman man show you why they are America's transmission and total auto care experts. Visit Cotman.com to download money saving coupons. Cotman, real service, real fast. You ever notice when you're driving on the highway after a high rate of speed, you just barely touch the brakes and the whole front of the car starts to shake? It doesn't necessarily mean that your front end is out of alignment. Cotman Transmissions Total Car Care also can inspect your brakes, your front end, and your wheel bearings. Cotman Transmissions in Manassas, Virginia offers a free 21 point check. It consists of road testing your vehicle, a thorough visual inspection, and an electronic scan of the computer system. This goes a long way. Come see us. See Leonard and the fine folks at Cotman of Manassas, 9113 Mathis Avenue in Manassas. Give them a call at 703 365 7200. These guys only shut up when their mouths are full of food, which means there's a lot of silence during the commercial. Here's more Burning Rubber. Yeah, we're back to Burning Rubber Radio. That he bob that goes out to Fred Mathis there in Manchester, Kentucky. Fred, hope you're listening. Folks, we're here ready for the Burning Rubber Radio Roundtable. We're going to talk about some of the stuff that went on this weekend. On, and, of course, Daytona 500 got the nationwide race, and Reagan Smith won that one. And we had the truck race, of course, Rowdy Bush won that one. Dan, man, you ready to kick this off? I'm definitely ready to kick this off, man. How are we going to do this, Swami? We're going to break it down, trucks, nationwide, sprint cup, or are we just going to have a free-for-all? Yeah, heck, man, we're going to have a free-for-all. It don't matter to me, brother. I know I know you're going to have a comment about something, so I can't wait to hear it, man. <laughs> All right, I'll give you a little rundown. Uh, truck race, uh, it was a good truck race. I enjoyed it. Uh, big shout-out to my buddy Tyler Reddick for picking up Rookie of the Race. And I mean, the ARCA race, he done well. The truck race, he done well. Uh, I think the kid's got a bright future. I really hope that he picks up some sponsorship to run more than the 15 races he's scheduled to run for uh, – uh, Keselowski in, in the truck series. Uh, nationwide race, you know, wasn't too impressed with that. I was actually worried heading into the, the cup race with the way that race played out. But I'm going to surprise you, Swami. I'm going yeah. to surprise you, buddy. I have nothing negative to say about the Sprint Cup race. It was a damn good race for a NASCAR pavement race. I was, I was thoroughly 
uh, entertained after the rain delay. Um, thought it was good racing. I have nothing negative to say about Junior. Um, you know, he, he raced his butt off. He benefited from that piece of tape. You know, the last two laps basically had a couple uh, uh, qualifying laps there at the end, which I really think helped him. Um, yeah. You know, but hey, you know, that, uh, there's nothing negative that can be said about it. Um, you know, I guess if I want to put my tinfoil hat on, I can say NASCAR got, uh, you know, no, they couldn't have got a better script for the week for the Daytona 500 than the three on the pole. Um, you know, Junior went in the race, uh, the, the way it all played out. You know, it was a hell of a week, uh, you know, for, for NASCAR and exposure. Uh, but I am going to say this, uh, you know, <laughs> Austin Dillon, man, I didn't know cue balls on the pool table had a three on them, man. You know, that, it, it, that, that guy, that kid, he hit everything there was to hit, and, and uh, he holds the title tearing up the most cars on dirt tracks and pavement combined in the same week in the whole country over the last week. So uh, um, that's all I've really got to say, brother. That kind of surprised right. you, don't it? Well, yeah, yeah. I got a, one question. I know you're good buddies with Kyle Larson, man. Have you heard anything about his wreck or him or anything? Well, you know, there, there was a lot of people out there that said he shouldn't have been out on the track with, uh, you know, the tire cutting down there at the beginning of the race and him getting up into the wall a couple times. And, you know, but, hey, that's, that's you know, that's the nature of the beast. That's the way racing goes, man. You, you try to overcome. He was actually in, in position to pick up. Uh, the lucky dog or the way around, whatever it was when that happened. And I, I don't know what happened, why Dylan got up into him, how he did or whatever. Nobody hit him. Nobody was, you know, they, they was close, but there was nobody around to affect the air or anything else. He just literally moved up the track and spun Larson. But, uh, um, you know, it is what it is, man. But, you know, here's the big thing, Swami. There were 10 dirt track racers in the Daytona 500. You know, people look down on dirt track racing and grassroots racing, but I'm telling you what, you know, we're seeing another one of those influxes in the in the NASCAR from the dirt track level, uh, you know, from the grassroots dirt track level all the way up through the three series. And, uh, you know, I, that's a good thing for grassroots racing and dirt racing in general to have that many guys up there in the quote-unquote big leagues. Yeah, I agree with you. Charles, what you got, bud? Well, I got a couple things. You know, first off, the truck race, I'm telling you guys, it would have been fantastic, but I don't know why NASCAR came up with the rule where they couldn't do the bump in for just a certain amount of time. You had a bunch of guys going out there wanting to unleash some ponies, and they all had to ride around at half throttle most of the night until the last five laps, and they started racing, and you've seen a little bit of bumping and pushing. That's not normally the truck series, guys, and I, I really hope that NASCAR will reevaluate that because all they did was clumped everybody together. And then when it come down to it, we had the first – two or three big wrecks there or whatever, especially the one at the end that basically took out Joey Coulter, which I didn't care for. But that was okay. Nationwide, didn't watch it. Wasn't interested. Me either. When I want to watch when I want to when I want to watch the race and I'll watch, you know, the trucks or I'll watch the Sprint Cup. And of course I did watch some of the race. I didn't watch all of it because some of us have to work at four AM in the morning. But anyway, long story <laughs> short, I thought it was a good race after they started back. I think a lot of the guys were more anticipating something going so they were rushing to get back to the front because the track was green yep. but you also had some strong cars coming up towards the front and you know i forecasted the toyota winning it a couple weeks ago and i probably should have bit my tongue but i think if the planets wouldn't lined up uh the track was perfect um junior had a cheated up car they'd have won <laughs> yeah that's true so you think uh do you think that Junior, other than the picking up that tape there in the last two laps, probably had something cheated up? Is that what you're saying? Well, we already know that when he won Talladega and Daytona before that he had that perfectly made front end. So when the NASCAR inspectors put the mirror up under it to look to see if there was anything under there, it was painted to look like the bottom of the chassis. That's right. That's a given. And after that was kind of heard of and discovered and they started looking a little harder, you noticed that didn't happen. And all of a sudden he had one race in three or four years. Yeah, I know he, he used to run away from stuff out there in the tracks, but I will give it to Junior. He did some great restrictor plates racing. That was awesome. But the move of the week to me was what Rowdy did with Timothy Peters on the on the last lap of the truck race, man. That was just – that was – and you and I sat there a long time ago at Bristol when Bush was just now starting to race, and we looked at him and said, now that's a wheel man. Oh, and, yeah, he's a wheel man. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. And the thing about it was he knew – the way the trucks were, no bump drafting, no things like that. He knew how to plan to get up there 
and get that push the last minute. So yeah. it ended up working out pretty good. Yeah. And you know, I was pulling for Timothy Peters, you know, cause I, I just, he, he's such a good guy as you, if you've heard on the show here, Timothy's an excellent interview. He's an excellent guy at the track and he'll hang out with all the fans and everything. So, and, and what did you think, Dan, about the truck race? I, I, I agree with Charles. I, you know, it, I, overall it was a good race, but I do agree that, you know, and we talked about this when the rule pack, when the rules package come out this year about the bump draft and, and things like that. How is it going to be policed? Um, you know, it, it's it's a total judgment call on NASCAR's part as far as the penalty. But I do agree that they they've taken away, um, you know, one of the huge draws for the truck series. And and I guess you know, like I said, if we're going to go ten full hat, and I'm going to put my ten full hat on, one has to question, uh, you know, how sincere NASCAR is about keeping the nationwide series and the truck series going. Um, you know, I, that's kind of my opinion on it. But overall, I you know, nationwide race was a snoozer, but uh, sprint cup and truck race, I was I was entertained by this weekend. I agree, and of course, next week or this week for folks listening, we're going to be at Phoenix with the uh, the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. And Charles, that's one of your tracks, man. I know on the sim racing that you can get around Phoenix. What do you think we're going to see with the Cup guys at Phoenix? Oh, I love Phoenix, man. And I also love the fact that if you'll notice traditionally that the Fords are a little bit stronger. Now, for a couple of years, we've kind of not seen a real strong Ford presence out there. And I'm not by no means rooting for Ford. Yes, I am. I really like Fords. But besides <laughs> that, uh, you're going to see some cars coming out there, you know, like the Carl Edwards who had a good run at Daytona. They stayed up there. Man, Biffle ran good. I'm, I'm telling you, you might see a Ford dominance over there because it just seems to me that the Fords – have got the downforce thing down pat. Yeah, yeah, I agree, and uh, I think that um, that that you're you're right. And Keselowski's team, of course, running those Fords, one of the few Fords out there running right now. You're going to see those guys uh, taking advantage of that downforce. But you know what? It's time for folks. It is time for the NASCAR chef, John Dix, who just walked in here with us, and he's going to tell us all about what's good to eat and what's on the grill. How are you doing there, Mister NASCAR Chef John Dix? Hey guys, burning rubber, baby. Burning rubber, baby. <clears throat> How we doing this evening? Hey, I can't complain, man. What about you? Oh, not bad, not bad. I enjoyed the race this weekend. You know, we had some um, some uh, awesome NASCAR stuff and some NHRA stuff, and uh, I even watched some uh, sprint boat racing, which was a lot of fun. That's different. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of boat racing, Andy, we're doing some. Uh, we're doing a tuna recipe tonight. All right, let's hear all about it, man. Okay, guys, this is very, very simple, but it's very, very tasty. We're going to start out with one can of Campbell's condensed cream of mushroom soup, a half a cup of milk, one cup of frozen peas, two cans of tuna. You want to drain it and flake it out real good. Two cups of medium. Egg noodles, you want to cook them first, and a half a cup of shredded cheddar cheese. Very simple. Okay, you're going to stir together the soup, the milk, the peas, the tuna, and the noodle in a one and a half quart casserole uh, dish. You're going to bake it at 400 degrees for about 20 minutes. Stir it up real good. Sprinkle your cheddar cheese on top. Put it back in the oven for about two minutes, and voila, you got you a quick, healthy, good meal that's going to make you fat like Andy and I. <laughs> <laughs> oh my lord don't tell everyone that i only weigh 300 pounds man <laughs> 300 yeah yeah 3, well i tell you what so. guys it's a good quick little recipe and uh you know the all the racing seasons are getting geared up and some of the local tracks around here in alabama are getting geared up and i'm excited about it and uh nhra and everybody yeah no doubt and Folks, if you got a question for John Dixon, NASCAR chef, you can drop us a line to burning.rubber at hotmail.com. Ask John about his recipes. And, of course, when he gets around to it, he puts it up on the Burning Rubber Radio Facebook page. You can go up there and, and uh, check out John's recipes. They're always good eating, man. I, John, I, I can't wait for some of your, uh, your ribeye hamburgers, buddy. Yeah, man, I enjoyed them. I cooked some this weekend. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hey, by, by the way, real quick, are you going to be uh, anything lined up cooking for smoke? Well, I know we're going to be doing Talladega. Uh, I was supposed to do Daytona, but they ran out of hot passes down there. So um, 
You know, it is what it is. It happens sometimes at Daytona and Charlotte, but um, I know we're going to be doing Talladega in the first weekend of March, excuse me, first weekend of May. And uh, other than that, I'm not sure right now. All right, buddy. Well, it's that time to get, man. Let's hear a burning rubber, baby. Let's take it out. Burning rubber, baby. That's right, folks. Hang out. We'll be right back with more burning rubber. Hi, I'm Mickey for Bed Bug Detection Services. Bed Bug Detection Services rescues dogs from the Humane Society and the SPCA, then trains them at the Florida Canine Academy. We then pair them up with a handler where they will spend the rest of their lives in a happy family home working in the community. We want to rescue our second dog, but we cannot do it without your help. We are fundraising to bring home our next canine. Please go to bbds.us, that's bbds.us, and do your part in helping us rescue another dog. bbds.us will give life, home, and a meaning to another dog. bbds.us. With every donation, you will receive a signed postcard from our current bed bug detection dog, Rescue Lily. Go to bbds.us. And thank you. Did you know that birthday parties help build confidence in kids? Yeah. Did you know that giving kids less sugar before bedtime helps them sleep better? Oh, totally. Did you know that friendly kids have more friends? Everybody knows that. Hey, guys, did you know that most people think they're using the right car seat for their kid, but they're not? I didn't know that. Parents who really know it all know for sure that their child is in the right car seat at the right age and size. Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat to make sure your child is protected. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. In the race of everyday life, it's nice to have the green flag. But drivetrain problems are the pits. A fully remanufactured engine, transmission, or differential from Jasper Engines and Transmissions costs less than a new vehicle and comes with a three-year, 100,000-mile nationwide transferable warranty. See jasperengines.com for details and get the green flag in your race of everyday life. See the boys at Chandler and Sons Automotive, 45977 Old Ox Road in Sterling. Give them a call, 703-437-7300. Before a disaster turns your family's world upside down, it's up to you to be ready. Get a kit. Make a plan. Be informed. Learn how at www.ready.gov. Brought to you by the Federal Emergency Management Agency and the Ad Council. Ginger Williams Chevrolet Buick GMC is your Lexington, Kentucky, and Corbin Chevy Buick and GMC authority. From pre-owned to the newest models, Ginger Williams is the only place to shop in the Lexington area. Check out their website for your next new or pre-owned vehicle, www.tincherwilliamschevrolet.com. All of the full-line inventory of in-stock and on-order Buicks, GMC trucks, and Chevrolets are right there online. Plus, you can check out what's hot at Tincher Williams on the homepage. Schedule your service appointment. Browse the inventory. Look for Tincher Williams specials. Check out your financing options. See what GM incentives are being offered for your vehicle. You can even shop for new tires at their convenient online tire store and get directions from wherever you are right there. It's all online at www.tincherwilliamschevrolet.com. That's Tincher Williams Chevrolet Buick GMC, located in London, Kentucky. Your Lexington and Corbin Chevy. Buick and GMC Authority. You're listening to Burning Rubber Radio. Now back to the guy that wrecked Andy Hillenberg's KNNE series car at Charlotte Motor Speedway and lived to talk about it. And the crew that will never let him forget about it. Yeah, that's right. I wrecked a car and who cares, man? Uh, you guys have been giving me HE double two picks about that for the last three years. But anyway, welcome back to Burning Rubber Radio. Charles, we have had a wonderful show, buddy. Oh, there's no doubt, man. Like I said, getting to talk to Chico and meeting him in person, man, is ranking pretty high up there in my books. Yes, definitely was. And, and Dan, thanks for being on the phone with us anyway, man. Everybody in that cell house over there ought to be getting pretty PO'd with you hogging the phone, man. Oh, yeah, man. I want the phone back. Real quick, want to give a big shout out to Brady Bacon and Brian Clawson for parking it down at Ocala uh, in the USAC Amsoil National Sprint Car Series. Winner, Dirt Games, uh, number five. Uh, last week, and uh, uh, we look forward to seeing what's going to happen uh, in USAC this season. Yeah, that ought to be good. And of course, Dan, you got a show too, don't you, buddy? What's the name of it? That's USAC Unleashed, and it airs on uh, Performance Motorsports Network. Hey, one more shout out if I got time, Swami. I want to give a big shout out to uh, Floyd Up the Grove over there on the Nap Car Has Issues page. Man, he's doing a hell of a job running that page. And congratulations to Buddy Duncan on picking up the Nap Car League uh, fantasy win this weekend at the Daytona 500. That's right, and, and congratulations, Andy DeLay, for winning the iRacing.com. Oops, I'm sorry, I did that already. Anyway, Charles, buddy, until next week, 
<laughs> Dan, hopefully you'll be out of jail and with us in the studio. And until next week, folks, it's Andy DeLay, Bob Steele, Charles Robinson, and Dirty Dan saying, Burning Rubber, baby, we'll see you next week. Burning Rubber Radio is a copyrighted production of the Performance Motorsports Network.com, a division of the Scorpion Radio Group Incorporated. This program may not be rebroadcast, replicated, or saved in any media without the explicit permission of PMN. Check out our Facebook page, facebook.com slash burning dash rubber dash radio, or go to the Performance Motorsports Network.com website and look for our landing page there. The opinions expressed on this program are those of the hosts and guests and do not necessarily reflect like those of the management and ownership of either the Performance Motorsports Network or the Scorpion Radio Group, or those of our advertisers and marketing partners. Be listening next week as we munch through four or five large pieces, half the salad bar, and at least a case of chilled adult beverages. Hey there! Huh? What about the guests and the motorsports coverage and all the other cool stuff they do? Oh, yeah, well, well. Now, come on now! And they do one hell of a show. Okay. For Burning Rubber Radio, I'm Cougar Michael. Burning Rubber, baby!